Today, Booth Western Art Museum is honored to have as its guest from Austin, Texas, artist Chuck Middlecoff, featured in our 2009 temporary exhibition, Route 66 Meets Highway 41, Roadside Impressions of Chuck Middlecoff. Earlier this year, Middlecoff, known for his paintings of Western roadside icons, accepted the invitation from Booth Museum to generate a series of paintings that would feature not only subjects taken from Route 66, but a parallel uh, series of uh, images taken from U.S. Highway 41, a prominent highway near Booth Museum in Northwest Georgia. Chuck Middlecoff, welcome. Thank you very much, Jeff, for having me. So tell us a little about your um, background and apparently your connection with uh, roadside images in the West goes all the way back to your childhood. Yes, it does. Ready? Okay. And I was born in Massachusetts, and my dad was in the Air Force for a career, and we had traveled back and forth across the country to different duty stations and overseas, and I've got my first experiences of the road on those trips, and uh, staying in motels and eating at diners and filling up at gas stations. It was just appealing to me all across the United States, the road culture that was available. As a child, it gave me the wanderlust that I have today as an adult, and it was just a very enjoyable experience as a child to see the America that most children don't have that opportunity back in the 50s and 60s. So I guess TV was an influence too, was it not on your, um, your understanding of, of Western icons or your introduction to Western mythology? Yes, I saw the West, I saw the ranches and saw cowboys were at these stops and, and also the, the uh, childhood heroes, Roy Rogers and all the serials that are on TV, Hoplon Cassidy and Lone Ranger and that gave me that insight when I was playing uh, Cowboy and Indians when I was a kid, and so it, it came more alive when I went across the West and really saw the West and the cactus and the, the mesas and the wide, wide open spaces I saw on TV and at the movies and at the matinees. So did you together. see a connection as a child, uh, mm -hmm. the, the Westerns on TV, mm -hmm. which uh, many young adults uh, have missed, or mm -hmm. even Route 66, mm -hmm. which was once called the Mother Road, mm -hmm. and now with the interstate highway system, mm -hmm. very little of it is there. Mm -hmm. um, was there kind of a uh, connection between those two things? It seems like uh, cowboy images are quite a contrast to, say, um, roadside diner mm -hmm. uh, signage and other things you might have seen mm -hmm. on route, route 66. Right. And other highways also, just one Route 66 mm -hmm. as a child. But I, you saw the Western and the cowboy. And, you, and when, when I was a child, when I said we're going out west, you know, after these Arizona and New Mexico, and I was thinking maybe you'd see all these Roy Rogers out there and doing this thing and having a horse. A lot of people said they still probably tie horses up out there to, at Walmart or whatever the place was back then, the diners. And it was a contrast because it was two different lifestyles. You know, you saw the motels and all that stuff and the road culture, but you didn't see the, you saw the real cowboys. You didn't see the mythology, the mythical cowboys. Does that make sense? That you? So, but I, but I incorporate those two images in my art today, the cowboy images. So basically, um, you're, uh, you studied art mm -hmm. out west. Uh, looks like uh, mm -hmm. Metropolitan State College in Denver, and yes. then later you uh, uh, graphic design in mm -hmm. Colorado Institute of Art. Yes. Uh, did, you, uh, did you really want to study out west, or what was kind of uh, prompted you to uh, okay. do your schooling? Okay, can I go back way? to where, when I met Carol and my wife and all there that? There you go. Okay, sure. so I, right out of high school, I graduated in Manchester, Illinois, I graduated from high school, went into the Navy, and then four years in the Navy, and I came back out. My dad retired in Austin, Texas from the Air Force, so I moved back there. We moved back there after I graduated, went into the Navy, came back to Austin. I was going to school to be a draftsman, and then I went, then we, I got married, met Carol, an insurance company. We got married, moved to Colorado, and because that was a western state, we really enjoyed it. Carol talked a lot about the mountains, how nice it is compared to Austin, where it's humid and hot, we want to get to the cooler mountain area. So we went up there and uh, I decided to go to college, Metropolitan State College, and didn't know what I should major in. I took one art course as an elective and my professor encouraged me to pursue art. So I pursued art there. Then realizing that it's very difficult to be a gallery artist, make a living at it. And I didn't feel ready at that time. I didn't have any uh, style developed or subject matter to paint. So I decided to become, become a commercial artist and went to Colorado Institute of Art for two years and went out to LA and also Denver worked as a commercial artist. And that, be, that was too structured and uh, I wanted to do my own thing. So I started pursuing my fine art more and finally 16 years ago and 
1992, I decided to be a fine artist and approach galleries, and here I am here. Doing so, those. what influenced the transition uh, into from graphic design mm -hmm. to painting? Uh, because it was too controlled and structured, and committees and clients' input and egos and uh, artistic directors uh, stifling me a little bit, I think. And I just wanted to. It was a steady paycheck, but I wanted to be freer to do what I wanted to do and express myself. And for uh, for those who are viewing who've mm -hmm. seen your paintings, mm -hmm. though, it, it seems like uh, a, a lot of your graphic design experience mm -hmm. is incorporated yes. uh, both in your subject matter mm -hmm. and maybe your technique. Yes, Can it you is. Yep. kind of address how the, your graphic design background mm -hmm. um, influenced your, your technique and mm -hmm. the way that you, you do your paintings? Right. It's almost like I could use any of my paintings as an ad because I was uh, advertising as my background and also brochures and things. And so and it, it, almost illustrative, you know, I could illustrate a, a project, a concept, and uh, I learned composition, a lot of color, all this stuff, and all the elements of good art. And I incorporate these into my paintings, into the fine art. So, and they're very hard edged and uh, realistic. It's not photorealism, but uh, uh, sub, uh, representational and the concepts. I, that's why my art is, well, I try to, with the titles, like the headlines we used to do with copywriting headlines, we used to try to come up with some clever twist to an ad and that's why I try to do it in my titles and my artwork and also having a visual pun going on and not just settling for mediocre but try to push it, a, get it a little edgier and to make it a little bit more, uh, it's almost commercial uh, in a way of expressing myself trying to bring the public into the painting, let them look at it more and to get something out of it, some humor or whatever I'm, emotion I'm trying to evoke from them. And so I, I learned a lot as commercial artists more than I did fine art in college. And you know, technique also, just how to apply the paint and, and also discipline and how to, how to start and finish one and to think and come up with concepts. It was just a thorough education I really enjoyed. So, so uh, you time. use photo reference a good mm -hmm. bit in finding your subject matter mm -hmm. and... Uh, right. Rather than plain air being out on the site, I always take a photo and bring it back to the studio. Several angles and then work it together. Mm -hmm. And put th scenarios together. I don't just, you don't always see the perfect uh, scenario that you want to paint situation. So I always, like I'll take a cowboy here and take a phone booth here and put that together and take an M&M's candy bar and put that in there somewhere. So I'm always trying to build a scenario that's ideal to me. Almost like stage setting. But you originally kind of mm -hmm. focused on cowboys, did you yes. not, when you mm -hmm. first painted? Yes. And what kind of influenced you to, um, I mean, you still obviously incorporate cowboy right. imagery. Mm -hmm. And as you were saying, it's juxtaposed mm -hmm. with, with roadside iconography. Exactly. Um, so was there, was there a point when you decided, well, I'm not just going to paint cowboys, but I'm going to mm -hmm. include this, uh, this road, these roadside graphics? Right. Mm -hmm. The cowboy imagery with the Roy Rogers and everything came started me doing that and seeing real life cowboys in Colorado and out west when we traveled. And I was always in, uh, in rodeos and I always loved cowboys. I liked, the, liked their mannerisms, their character, what they stand for, their look. I love boots, I like old denim and leather. And I wanted to be more contemporary. I didn't like the Charles Russell and Remington kind of cowboys, the buckaroos and stuff. I wanted to do more contemporary. So the rodeo guys, the younger guys I love. And then one day I was standing at 7-Eleven uh, and these two cowboys came up with their trailer. It was all muddy, and they were going to car wash it in the car wash. And they went in 7-Eleven and came out with chili dogs and M&Ms and a big, big gulp. And I, I started looking. I'd never seen a cowboy do that. I always thought they'd eat, you know, steaks and things like that. But they eat the same things we do. And I started, started. Uh, I went over and started talking to them. I said and more about their lifestyle and everything. And they said, you know, they had a Schwinn bike and on the ranch, and they had a lot of the toys I had. And they like the candy I like and the food. And I said, that's very interesting, you know. And so I, that started putting me, I started putting candy bars in their back pocket for cowboy chew instead of just having tobacco chew. Uh -huh. It's just started, expanded my thing. I said, I can incorporate other things, just, not just have a Western thing, but appeal to uh, non-Western uh, uh, collectors, you know, that like other things. And so I started putting things together just to make my own twist on it. But it's true. It's real, you know. And so that opened me up, and then I started going. I didn't want to be locked into just doing cowboys and I wanted to do everything I love because I love everything and so I but having the same style and twist um, and how much expanded. did or the, the pop or or maybe continue mm -hmm. maybe the pop art movement still does mm -hmm. influence your work yeah. is that is that true or was there one artist in particular out of that movement or more that kind of 
uh, inspired you or mm -hmm. continues to mm -hmm. influence you? There's a lot of pop artists out, but Andy Warhol was the biggest, of course, back in the 60s. He started it all, I believe, mm -hmm. just putting uh, commercial items into artwork. And I thought that intrigued me as an artist because I was, when I went to art school, I studied him a lot. And there's a lot of other artists that I, even now today, that are doing still lives that are really funky, you know, and, and really popular and wonderful. And so I just wanted to do something more than traditional art. I didn't want to just do landscapes and flowers in a vase. I wanted to go beyond that and not be an Andy Warhol, but to uh, just make it interesting. I wanted something that somebody had to walk by and study. They couldn't just walk by and say, I've seen things like that, you know. And so I, I just love all the commercial, my commercial background, of course, selling products, advertising products uh, is involved in that also, putting something together. But it seems like even the more contemporary mm -hmm. uh, commercial signage and mm -hmm. uh, roadside graphics mm -hmm. that you capture in your paintings, mm -hmm. it seems like much of it is really more uh, vintage. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the, actually most of the, say, signage from be it diners or motel signs or even a Coca-Cola mm -hmm. machine, there's the strong element of texture. Mm -hmm. And does this, does this not go back to your cowboy art or how does, how does texture come into it? And mm -hmm. why is that, why is texture and right. rusting and mm -hmm. decay important to right. you? I don't like new things. If I have to paint a new car, I couldn't do it. But I love an old rusty pickup. There's something about the texture, the patina and the color that changes when it, something decays. And it's just the, the flaking, I don't know. I just, it, I think it's a visually stimulating thing for the viewer and that's what I'm trying to get is not only the subject that you're looking at, but the details of it, how it's uh, falling apart. And that's an art form in itself by nature, you know, let alone the sign that was designed by an artist. Mm -hmm. But just something that's slick and perfect is an appeal to me. I, and that goes back to the boots and the beat up jeans mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it's just more interesting to me to just have that texture. And it makes it pop. You got a three dimensionality to the thing and it's just interesting to look at. And so, yeah, the, the three-dimensionality, it's, it's not just something that you render, but sometimes you, mm -hmm. you'll actually incorporate uh, 45 records or mm -hmm. candy wrappers. You mm -hmm. mentioned the candy wrappers. Mm -hmm. And you'll put the actual object uh, mm -hmm. on the painting. Mm -hmm. uh, is that just to make it more three-dimensional, or when did you start doing that? Some things kind of started when I didn't want to take the time to draw it or paint it because it was so detailed. And then also I wanted the, the trompe l'oeil effect of having it... Uh, not some things I paint and some things I'll the real thing will be there and from a distance sometimes it's, it kind of tricked the viewer to have to go up there and look and say did he paint that or is that the real thing and so it's it just another twist that I put into my art to make it more interesting and appealing and more of a middle cough you know trying to do things that aren't being done in the world art world today I think that's so it. tell us uh, briefly um, how did you um, accept this challenge or this invitation to not only uh, paint uh, some paintings from Route 66, mm -hmm. but to parallel that with a series of, of works from US 41. And US 41, of course, is the uh, primary highway uh, near the Booth Museum mm -hmm. that I would say if there's a Southern Route 66, mm -hmm. that would probably That's be right. it. Um, and you painted all the paintings in the show this year, mm -hmm. this in, in 2009, mm -hmm. how did this kind of come about? With the museum inviting me? Right. Also? Okay. With Seth. Right. Uh, Our director, Yes, right. your director. Mm -hmm. he, invite, he, caught, he, he saw my art out in Legacy Gallery out in Scottsdale, mm -hmm. and I had some signs out there, and I think that intrigued him. And then he knew about 41, which I didn't. I know the Allman Brothers came out of the song Ramblin' Man, and they mm -hmm. mentioned 41 in there. Mm -hmm. And I heard the song, but I never identified it with this being out here, or what it looked like. So I'd always traveled 66 over 38 years of marriage. We've been, you know, maybe five times across there and throughout the West, all the different highways and always used that subject matter. And so when Seth called me out of the blue and asked me to invite me to do this, to come out and talk to him and, and make a presentation, I was intrigued because I have done mostly Western icons and not too much of the Eastern, Southeastern. And it was a challenge for me, and I said, and he made it sound very like it was just like Route 66, and so I said, well, that'd be cool. Let me do that. So I came out, and that's basically how it happened. I just took the challenge, and it was a very interesting and enjoyable experience. Well, I know I can remember growing up in North Georgia um, and driving north from Atlanta to Cartersville, going through Cobb County. There was mm -hmm. just numerous uh, magnificent uh, mm. motel signs and, oh. and diner signs. And of course, uh, a lot of people are familiar with the big chicken. Mm -hmm. um, 
did you find it challenging now that so much of that, I know that I, I don't see a lot of that there anymore. Yeah. What, how did you find your subject matter on or near mm -hmm. US 41? Mm -hmm. It was very disappointing when I first came out and we took the route because I thought there'd be just as much material out there, out here that was on Route 66 and there wasn't. And so it was very difficult to find it because it, you have a lot of greenery here, trees, and you have to really look around, there's a lot of traffic. So it was very hard, more uh, intensive, intense to be searching for this and keeping an eye on the, where you're going and everything mm -hmm. and finding things that were growing over. And, and I asked someone, they said when Atlanta had the, the Olympics back in the 80s, they said they cleaned up a lot of the area and tore down the signs and the old motel things to clean it up for the publicity. And which is a shame, you know, because mm -hmm. it messed me up for my project. But it was very, I found some material, but it was very, compared to Route 66, it was very uh, minimal. And one thing that I find fascinating is um, how you describe not only the, diff the obvious difference in landscape from, say, the, the very hard and uh, solitary desert, open desert landscape and the very uh, lush green and softer southern landscape. Mm -hmm. And apparently uh, this expresses itself, it, 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 it comes through in the signage, does it mm -hmm. not? Is this something you discovered? It does. I think it, not only the product they're selling or the type of motel, but also the color schemes. It's a little cooler back here. You got the reds and blues and greens of the signage out here and, the, and more of a rounder edge, softer. And that goes with the landscape and all, as well as the, uh, the motif of the, the cafe or the gas station or the uh, uh, motel that you're staying at. You have the Dixie Motel. That's a southern thing compared to an Apache Motel out west where the cowboys and Indians are. And you have a lot of yellows and reds and, and brighter colors out there and very edgy to go with the, I think, the mesas and the, the rocky terrain mm -hmm. and the dry climate and the brilliant sunlight. So the artist, whoever designed the signs, I think that that was a, their influence. There's the, the type of the sunlight here compared to out there. They took that into account when they designed and also what they're trying to promote to the traveler, the, the, the lodging they'd be staying at and give that, that feeling of what they're gonna, where they're going to be staying to give that south the southern feel more than the western feel and is it not true i believe one of your motel signs mm -hmm. that was on the old route 66 mm -hmm. which of course a lot of it's kind of been abandoned the, the sign was there but mm -hmm. there was no motel it right. was just a sign just which is amazing yeah. out there it's almost like they left it there as a memorial to something of the past because when i traveled as a child mm -hmm. all these things are new the motel everything was clean brand new back in the 50s and 60s and now I'm going back and uh, seeing the, all these run-down places and places that have vanished completely. And compared to out here, the land is more precious out here and, and uh, um, uh, businesses move in when a lot becomes available, I believe, because you have the population and there's very little land compared to out there. When something uh, dilapidates out there, it just stays that way. You know, it's gone forever because there's not a need for that land. And or Walmart will come in and take, run the, the mom and pop business out. And here, every square inch, square mile, I think, is uh, important to be developed. And there's always, some, we've seen some things that have just changed, they've covered over the sign temporarily, or there's a for sale sign they've painted over what it was, and someone else is just gonna mow it down. So there is a contrast to of that. So perhaps out west, I know that um, it's been said that um, uh, in a lot of cases, the building uh, is, is, is not as important as a roadside symbol as the sign is. Mm -hmm. do, do you find that to be true? Yes, because uh, the sign attracts the people in. You're trying to get people that are going 70 miles an hour down the road to stop at your place. So you've got this, the, the, the lights and the arrows and everything at night, of course, trying to get you in there. And then daytime, the colors and the shape of the sign, trying to intrigue. I mean, yeah, it's, a, it's an emotional thing. I think you have 10 motels and which one are you going to stay at? Not only for price, but also what appeals to you. Do you want to stay at a Western place or do you want to stay at an Indian place or you know, live at, go in a teepee or what kind of cafe do you want to eat at? And they're always trying, it's advertising. You know, it's just like reading an ad or seeing an ad on TV. That, they have a split second to catch your eye and to, to pull you in that, to that place. And it's, it's, it's just that uh, they're just trying to get, get you in there. And that's what it's all about. And it seems like that's such a contrast. I know that there's a uh, painting of, mm -hmm. of an old uh, Shell mm -hmm. uh, gas station mm -hmm. sign uh, in, in the show that we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently uh, 
that wasn't so obvious. I mean, there wasn't there some green or something growing over it. Mm -hmm. It seemed kind of serendipitous that yeah. you found that. Was yep. that is that truer in the process in the south and out west? It's hard to find them because it was yeah. overgrown, like I said, and we just barely caught it. And we had to make a U-turn and come back. Out west, you can see for miles and miles things coming up. And here, it's around every bend, you know, the winding roads and over the hill. And the trees uh, block a lot of things. And, and there's not as much. So you really have to, when you come across, it's a real treat to find it. You know? But out there, every, like I said, every 50 yards, you have to stop in and out of the car taking it. So there's, it's more prolific of the material I need out there. That's why I was disappointed when I came out, because I remember Seth saying, well, we got a big chicken out here. And I said, well, that's cool, you know? And, but he didn't say much more. So when I came out, I realized why he didn't say much more, because there wasn't much more. And I really had to dig, but I did find enough to, to represent the Highway 41. But I know it was a lot, like you said, it, it's been cleaned up, and, and it's just, a, it's sad in a way, but I understand that that's the way economics is and business works. You know, they can't just keep things up there for your viewing pleasure. But out west, it be, has it become a draw to go out there to see these things, I believe. And that's almost part of the commercialism, to draw you out to the, one, the motels that are still in operation, that people want to go out and just experience Route 66 because of the old icons. They can see the old ways before they're torn down. And in, in, so. many of your, in many of the paintings, there's, mm -hmm. there's not just one icon. Say there's not just um, mm -hmm. the, the, a sign as, as the central figure, but you'll have basically a composition, mm -hmm. like a, a still life that, that mm -hmm quite elaborate and yeah. you'll have a lot of not only a lot of different images but you'll have a visual pun as you mentioned in the title mm -hmm. but it seems like they're visual puns um, in a lot of the imagery mm -hmm. what um, other than assembling um, iconographic mm -hmm. uh, items together mm -hmm. that say might reflect souvenirs mm -hmm. on Route 66 mm -hmm. and maybe a Coke machine. Why is there so much, um, why are there so many items in some paintings in these compositions? Because mm -hmm. I'm weird. <laughs> Basically, I'm just twisted. I, just, I'm, I get bored with art mm -hmm. and it become, I start out with, I don't know the, the ending of a painting. I don't know when it's finished until it's finished. I start out with a concept, an idea, I'll just put something down and start with that. And I'll say, now what goes with that? And it might sit around for a while, and I'll say, okay, this, I can add this and this. And it's just, when I start doing the signs, I say, I just don't want this to be a collection of signs or billboards. I want, because that's just, I might as well have taken a photograph of them. And I wanted the people to be entertained at the same time. And I want to be entertained. If I don't enjoy the art, I don't feel the viewer's going to enjoy it. And it, it takes a little nerve to, to push something and make it edgy to the point where it's not corny, you know, or trite. And so I have a hard time getting through that sometimes then sometimes one day it's just an emotional thing and it, day by day it changed i'll be very bold and say i'm just going to do this i don't care what people think because i want it on there put bubbles and the rubber duck on this you know motel sign or whatever and rather than just having a sign and then another day i'll, I'll get a, a a fear of doing that and say well this is pushing the edge too much and it's going to be corny so it's, it was a back and forth up and down fight as i try to express myself and what i feel i just want to have fun i want to it's about me and I want to be different than other artists. And whatever comes out has to come out. And if you don't let it out, you're going to be, uh, I think, disappointed and uh, frustrated with your career. And so, and as I grow and add things, and it's just going to be a natural thing. And I, I'm just going to let it go and do it. That's it. So I can't your please your, everybody. your pieces so. have certainly been very well received by viewers mm -hmm. at Booth Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think it's because um, you, you do familiar images or fun images, or, or why do you think your work is, is, is so popular? Uh, For this particular show, too? Uh, because I think they're getting the same thing I got out of it doing it. I think people are looking for fresh work. I think they're looking for non-mundane work that they've seen in galleries. They've seen, they've seen that before. Every gallery they go into, there's a lot of copying and, and similarities to work, and it's not nothing more than just what they're seeing, I think, and just pushing, and there's a lot of nostalgia in my thing, you know. People identify with my generation, we're all the same, baby boomers, and all these items that you said in the collage, I think, trigger emotions in their, in their, in their hearts and minds, that they've been there and they know that, and, and it's entertaining. I think they can look at the piece all, for a while and study it and not just have to pass by it and say, I've, been, I've seen that before, you know, been there, done that. I bought the T-shirt kind of thing, you know, and I don't want that in my art. I want it to be very unique, different, that you don't see everywhere, and it's just me as an artist expressing myself that way. I can't help it. I, it just comes out of me, and I think the people that I want to, those are the people I want to be attracted to it that feel the same way I do about art and their lives, and I want to bring happiness. I want to make people smile, 
there's enough uh, sadness and uh, frustration and uh, negativity in the world. I want something they can enjoy. If they do take it home with them, that they can enjoy it for a long time when they need a lift. I have the sense that your your artwork and your your subject matter, there, there's continuity, and yet at the same mm -hmm. time, um, there is a development. And uh, I believe you, you said at one point that you're ready to take your, your art to the next level. Mm. Uh, what would be the next level for you? Do you I, don't know. I don't know. It, it will be another level, but I, don't know. I can't picture it in my mind right now. It slowly develops, and it's a natural thing. If I force it, I can't just say, well, what's going to be popular tomorrow, or what will sell? I just have to do what I love to do. And Whatever I, it develops, I, I have no idea. But slowly but surely, things change. And I say, this is something I did differently than last year. And it might be a subtle thing. It might be a great jump. I'm not sure. But something will change. And all artists do change, I think. And if they don't, then they just dry up and give up, I think. So. Is there anything right. else that, um, that, that's inspiring you to, mm -hmm. in, in your artwork? You mentioned, obviously, the negativity in the world. Mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, kind of bringing back some of the nostalgia that, mm -hmm. uh, of course, the baby boomer generation will appreciate. Mm -hmm. But what would you like for the, maybe the upcoming generations to, uh, how, would, how are you maybe, you seem to be catching their attention and, mm -hmm. and how, what's the inspiration there? Mm -hmm. I want to inspire other artists for sure, mm -hmm. okay, to expand themselves just like Warhol did and all the other artists that have come down through history. They've been a, a jumping off point for everyone, whether it's music or art or dance. Mm -hmm. There's always something better or something innovative that triggers something in you. Say, so, well, I can, I want to top that, or I want to use that. That inspires me, and I want to just, it, but it doesn't say enough, and I need to push it a little bit further. And like we were talking about the other question, when it when it stops being fun for me to do art, then I'm just, I'll have to quit. You know, go get a regular, real job, and that's why I want to keep it fun for me and fun for the viewer. And I think generation, I don't want. There's no hidden hidden message or heavy. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, Agenda or yeah, uh, motivate or, or uh, <laughs> hidden meanings in my paintings right. or anything. They're just up front. There's no, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I'm trying to think of the word. I'm not trying to do anything except sure. share an, in a new way what people might have seen all their life but never really see it in a new way. Mm -hmm. Or if they haven't seen it, discover it for the first time. Mm -hmm. And to entertain, to make people feel good. Uh, to inspire other artists to push it and ex uh, express their emotions and their life, life uh, experiences and let the viewers see that. And all the artists, all, it's always grown, you know, from Leonardo on up to present day. Art has developed and become a different art form and, and way of expressing themselves. And every artist is unique and we'll all, two people could paint, look at the same thing and paint it and it would come out different. And I'm, I'm not trying to be different for a different sake. It's just that I need to be challenged myself, first of all, and then challenge the viewer. Does that make sense? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And I just want art to be fun. Well, and it's definitely been a fun adventure to uh, have your work here, and uh, I'm sure it will continue to be. And uh, it's been a pleasure, and best of luck on your continuing uh, road ahead. Thank you very much for having me. I guess she knows we're done. She's sleeping.